All right, neighbors and niggers, disregard how hideous I look today. I'm exhausted, um, but I am a Kenya Blues Baby Doll, also known as K-Lane, and I'm presenting y'all with Queen Sugar three days late because I can't get my life together, um, and yeah, <laughs> basically, I've told y'all before I suffer with depression. Oh, oh, you just gonna jump out. Okay, okay, wow, you're a nigger. You're a white... <laughs> I'm gonna try to be. I'm gonna try to be saved today because it's Sunday. Anyway, Queen Sugar, uh, I hope you get into a car accident and your car combusts. And I hope that um, you're injured. Not dead, but hurt very badly. Anyway, y'all know I hate driving. Um, I really, really intended to start this video off uh, light because I've been gone for a minute and I'm just, you know, I'm back with the jump off. But um things just keep happening and i'm not able to give you light and, and fresh today so anyway this is queen sugar the episode episode should have been called who's shucking and jiving now because we'll get to it but um we start off with charlie and her updo and i'm like okay she's not charlie today she's charlotte she was giving you charlotte and uh she's making some green smoothies and uh calling micah down for breakfast and all of this offers ralph angel a smoothie and all of that you know, it's just a cute little, you know, morning moment. And then Darla comes in and, uh, you know, they call for Blue. Blue, come on and see what's going on. And Blue doesn't come down immediately, but Micah does. And Micah, you know, Darla asked Blue, where's Mike? I mean, where's, Darla asked Micah, where's Blue? Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> he asked, you know, she asked him, you know, where's Blue? And she says he was in bed when I got in the shower and he wasn't there when I got out. And so for a minute, there's panic. Um, but we, he, he comes down to the kitchen and Micah had mentioned that maybe Blue is missing like his calculus notebook. And when Blue comes into the kitchen, he says, well, me and Kenya decorated it for you. And Micah kind of gets short with him and he's like, didn't I tell you to stay out of my stuff? And I'm like, ain't you in his room? <laughs> That's his stuff now. Like, what's wrong with you? This is a child. I didn't care for it. But, you know, I'm protective of, of little Blue. Um, so, let me see. Charlie mentions that they put the deposit down on a rental. They'll be, you know, in it in, in two weeks' time and all of that. Um, let me see. So we find out that Bala is going to take blue swimming. And I got nervous. I don't know why I got nervous, but I did, you know. I just, I know she's not on drugs, but I just don't feel like, you know, people who are on drugs should take kids swimming. But she ain't on drugs. But I got shook a little bit. Plus, just a brief, you know, for a, a twinkling of an eye, I was shook. I was like, oh, Lord, swimming? Yeah, I, I be able? Can we do stuff like this? Is she going to get overwhelmed? I didn't know. You know, I worry about Darla. That's my good, good girlfriend, though. We go way back. All the way back to Buffy. But um, then Ralph open, opens his mail, and he got a check. And I'm like, well, praise God. You know, anytime you open the mail and you got a check, that's a moment to give him some glory. So let's move over to Unvine Hollywood. And he's fixing the sink. And, you know, she says, thank you for fixing the sink. And then he says, what's next on the list? And she says, nothing. You're done. And he said, no, I'm never done. There's always something to do. And she says, yeah, well, you fix it, and then you go out on the rig, and then it breaks, and then you come back, and then you fix it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's fixed now. You just got to wait for it to break again. And I'm like, you know, he bored. He just ain't got nothing to do. So she tells him, you know, sit down, put your feet up, drink a beer. And he looks very disinterested. And I'm like, I understand that you are so accustomed to doing things, but you can't go fishing. You can't, like, you in the South. Southern niggas that are born and raised Southern, they love to go fishing. They love to go, they deer hunt, you know, around these parts. Um, not these exact parts, but, you know, around this area. Anyway, they, they do all sorts of things around here. They grow watermelons and carry on. These folks over here got personalized license plates. It's just a lot going on. All sorts of things. I'm like, you can't find something to do. But he can't, he can't find nothing to do at the moment. Um, Charlie is giving a tour of the mill to these farmers hoping for their business and I hope y'all can hear me <laughs> but um yeah so she's you know telling them about all this state-of-the-art stuff and da 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 and you know they're just like this is just real fancy your daddy always said farming is waiting and waiting is farming and she's like yeah that's I mean that ain't a lie we just got this nice new stuff too like you can wait and you can use our new stuff I want your business <laughs> she was giving all of this they recruited um Joe Rodriguez to be the operations manager. I don't know why I put a G, an extra G, an extra G. I can't talk. I said manager. Anyway, um, and he's got over 20 years of experience because the dudes were like, 
I mean, you you new to the game. You ain't true to this. You new to this. Like, what's tea? <laughs> and they were like, all right, well, Remy got the Joe Rodriguez to be our operations manager. So, I mean, you can you can cut that out. We got it. <laughs> um, but they're just giving her a hard time. As men do, men do that, black men do that, and southern black men love to give people a hard time. And these are southern <laughs> black men. And so they're going to give her a hard time. And she's having a hard time this episode. You see her struggling to understand the Southern culture of um, teasing. All we do down here is tease. Now, I'm a little sensitive, so I might start reading after a couple teases. But I'm half Yankee. So, <laughs> but Southern people, all they do is tease and eat pie. That's all we do. <laughs> That's it. We tease, we eat pie, we grow watermelons, and we go fishing. <laughs> it's like, just that's the whole deal. Um, so anyway... Nova meets with, uh, I believe they said his name was Mr. McDonald. Steve is what we're going to call him, because I believe they also said Steve. And um, he tells her that we're going to put a pen in all your social, social justice writings. And, you know, we want balance. We want to talk about, you know, your nigga stuff, but also, can we talk about stuff that's not your nigga stuff? And she's like, well, it's hard to find balance around here because um, things are unequal. And the Bible says you need to be equal, equally yoked. So I'm just trying to give niggas the equal yoke. Who's blowing and why? I'm trying to give niggas the equal yoke that, you know, they don't talk about us in the media. So I'm giving them some words. Uh, but he, he didn't care for that. <laughs> he was like, just, let's just try it my way. Let's, let's do balance. You know, white people always love balance, but they do not love equality. Anyway, um, let me see. Remy brought in 1,500 acres of cane. Uh, he got two, two farmers to sign up to be part of the mill, and that's 1,500 acres right there. So that's a good little start. The girls are excited, you know, all of that. And, um, Charlie says, yes, I'm going to buy you some lunch. That's some good news. You know, we're glad about it. And just as they're getting ready to take off for, for lunch, uh, Nadine calls. And Nadine, first of all, when I heard her say Nadine, I said, I ain't heard nobody named Nadine in a while. That was like, Nadine would have been a 90s TV mom. <laughs> I feel like last time I heard Nadine, I was watching like the Parkers and Girlfriends or something. But anyway, so Nadine calls and she says, you know, this is the real estate agent. She says that the tenants in the new apartment that they put the down payment on have all of a sudden decided they're not going to move. And so then we shook because we homeless all over again. Um, and she says, Nadine tells Charlie that she wants to show her another listing right now. And Remy's like, all right, well, we'll just, you know, we'll take a rain check. That's cool. We, we, you know, we, can, we eat every day. We can eat tomorrow. It ain't nothing. <laughs> and um, Charlie says... Well, do you want to just come with me and then we can grab a bite to eat after? I said, no, 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 Charlie, don't do that. No, Charlie, don't do that. Don't, don't, Charlie. That's what I said. I'm watching this now at work, mind you. <laughs> and I got customers walking around the store. And I'm standing there at the, the register saying, no, don't, no. And the folks looking at me like, was I not supposed to pick up this? I, I'm like, oh, girl, please, I'm watching. It's just don't worry about me. <laughs> it was a mess. But yeah, I told Charlie, but she ain't listen. So she took this country, this, this bumpkin to... The, the, the Maldives, the Maldives, as the girls call them around here, if they even know what they are. But, um, yeah, th you know, this house is it's nice. The woman is saying words like Oasis and Home Theater, and Remy is like, what is the Oasis Home Theater? Water and movies? I'm shook. And I'm like, what I don't understand, I'm, I'll get to it in a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'll tell y'all in just a little while why I told uh, Charlie, don't invite Remy to this. Um, Ralph Angel and Mr. Prosper are, you know, tiptoeing through the fields as, you know, as, as farmers do. And Ralph Angel is telling him, you know, we got the soybeans on deck. We're going to start uh, planting them today. It's going to be a good day. And Prosper takes a peek and Ralph Angel takes a peek and I take a peek. And we see these little, these little white things all on the cane. And I said, oh, no. That's what I said. I said, oh, no. And that, that pitch. And <laughs> I said, Prosper, what is that? And Ralph Angel answered before Prosper could. And he said, is that white fly? And Prosper said, that's white fly. And I said, Lord Jesus, is that like Spanish fly? Did Bill, Bill Cosby came by and sprinkled the, the land. I can't. What is white fly, y'all? Like, I'm Southern, but I'm not that Southern. Anyway, <laughs> so while Char uh, Charlie and Remy are looking at the new home, the new location, um, Ralph Angel FaceTimes her and shows her the white fly. And Remy's like, oh, Lord, this is just not great news. It's not the worst news, but it's not weak. This is not opportunity. This is not a good moment. And um, so they mentioned that they need to start scrubbing the leaves and they need to spray and, you know, get it all together. And Ralph ain't just, um, or Charlie asked, how much is it going to cost to do all this? And I'm saying like, Charlie, <laughs> you are standing in a home where they're using words like oasis 
and home theater. I don't understand why you worried about it. Cut the chick. Bust it down. <laughs> Turn your goofy down. <laughs> like, I had to bring out some Nicki Minaj verses on you. I tell all my niggas, cut the chick. That was a what that's a that's a that's a sermon right there. Nikki be preaching sometimes. Now sometimes she don't be preaching because she she tried to minister to me about breaking Aretha records the other day and I said, okay, you broke Aretha's record. Aretha broke her own record. So it's two of y'all niggas that done broke this record. And so okay. And she said it twice in the song. I broke Aretha records. Okay, girl. Call Aretha and tell her. I bet she reads you. I bet she sends you a fax tomorrow. A cease and desist. Anyway, <laughs> but the word, the sermon this week was cut the chick, ah, bust it down, turn your goofy down, mm, turn it down now. Anyway, and then she starts talking about doing splits on the penis and things, and it just kind of, it, it turns into something else. <laughs> but the point is like, Charlie, you, you looking real back and forth, trying to buy this nice luxury home, and then asking how much it's going to cost to save the farm. It, it just, it don't look, it just, it's not a good look. But anyway, they uh, tell her it's going to be about $5,000. Ralph Angel says, well, that's cool. You know, I'll, um, I just, you know, take, the, I got my check for, for the soybeans from the, the grant or whatever the thing is, and I just use that. And for, for once, for once in my life, I found someone who loved me. Charlie took it upon herself. I invited and had to call her and say, sis, now do your brother right. Charlie took it up on her own self to say, no, no, Ralph Angel, that money is for the soybeans. I'll cut the check, bust it down, turn your goofy down. Like, I said, I'm so grateful for this moment because, you know, I read the book. I'm going to keep saying it because I did. I read the book and in the book, Ralph Angel was so, so unlikable. <laughs> like, he was so, I hated him until the very last page. I was like, this nigga ain't no good. And Charlie... Charlie was amazing. Charlie was out in the field. She was working. Her, her jeans had oil stains on the knee. Like, Charlie was just, she, she just was. And I was so happy for her reading the book. Watching this show, I'd be like, Charlie, if you don't give your brother some, some time, cut him some slack. Like, good Lord, does it take all that? Do it, do it take all that? I'll be reading Charlie because I know how she was in the book. And I know how the, the relationships have changed. I have seen the change, unlike that girl about the bussing. I'm going all around the point here. Anyway, <laughs> she says, no, don't, you know, cut the check. I'll cut the check. And um, she pays for the, 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 little, the little plain thing to spray the yard with the, you know, the, the things to kill the, the Spanish fly that Bill Cosby left out in the, in the fields. And um, then, excuse me, let me park my vehicle. Then after that, well, let me just do it in chronological order. I took chronological notes this week. And I'm going I'm to do what I need to do here. Um, Nova. Nova is no no ho renge killing some babies. She's blessing these twins. And I said, these must be the, the kids that her friend was pregnant with the other week. And then it swoops over and we see the friend. And I said, I knew it. I knew it was her. <laughs> and, um, she's blessing the kids. And, you know, they are so precious. And she putting sugar on their lips and rose water on their foreheads and things. And may they never be thirsty. And I said, well, I'm thirsty right now. So let me <laughs> just take a because then nobody blessed me when I was born to say, may I never be thirsty. So I get thirsty. Um, but yeah, after she's done doing that and the kids or the babies are in this like this little tranquil state and they're just looking up at her adoringly and it was, it was, it was cute. The friend says, why you ain't got no kids? Like your daddy did. You don't, you don't want no kids? And Nova's like, I got a younger sister, a younger brother and two nephews. Like <laughs> kids. I got like four of them. What you talking? I'm out here like raising everybody. I'm getting everybody out of bed, out the jail, paying their bail and things. I just these are my children. I'm I am I am the Earth's mother. <laughs> like yeah. So anyway, um, the friend does all that, and then she brings up work, and Nova's giving. You know he the you know the new editor wants me to do things differently, and yada yada. And the friend said, Well, why don't you just tell him you quit? And I said, That's not sound advice sis especially like no shade but you middle you know upper middle age looking all in in the in the hair region um and when you get to be upper middle age you are not so quick to tell your good girlfriends to quit their jobs what is why would <laughs> why would you tell her anyway but nova's like but girl what if he actually ends up like accepting my letter of resignation <laughs> then i ain't got no platform and no income i mean i know i sell weed over on tuesdays and thursdays but um the other days i need I need moolah. <laughs> and she goes through all of that. And I'm like, Nova, 
sis, do what your boss is telling you to do and just get on YouTube or start you a blog and do your social social, social justice <laughs> on your own time. Like, there's a way around it. There's a way. But anyway, um, Blue and, and Dollar come back from the pool and I, I'm relieved. <laughs> I was so relieved. When I saw them come back in one piece, I said, thank God. I was like, I know. I just know they're not going to drown Blue today. I was shook, though. I was nervous. Um... And they see the plane spraying, and Blue is all excited. He's like, what's that? And it's like, we, you know, he's spraying for the bugs. And then he goes to get Kenya, because he wants Kenya to see. And I said, I already see, because as we all know, I'm Kenya. And um, Dollar's like, did you know Blue can't swim? And I'm like, oh, each of your child's parents should know uh, that these things. <laughs> like, both of my parents know I can swim, and both of my parents don't even know me like that. <laughs> These are just things you should know, but you know, I'm gonna let her have some slack because he was in jail and, and she was on drugs. So, um, but Ralph Angel says he can't swim, and I said that's canon because in the book he almost drowned. It was a it was a hard day, but um, and then we find out that Darla swam in high school and she was some sort of a champion, and I'm like, so how old are they? Because I'm thinking that they've been together, you know, since middle school back in the day, like, cause Ralph Angel's my age. I'm 23. I think he may be 23 or 24. Not Ralph Angel, but Kofi. So how old is Ralph Angel supposed to be? Because Kofi is in my age group. We, we came up together. And then Bianca Lawson, as great as she looks, she's she's knocking on 40's door. So it's just, it could be anywhere. It's it's a lot of, it's a vast, it's what, who, whose age are we going with? Like, because she's telling him about high school. And I'm just like, I really thought y'all was in high school together like five years ago, like I was. But whatever though. Or six. Is it six years? Dang, I'm old. Anyway, um, because in the book, and I'm just gonna always say in the book, I'm sorry, I hit my microphone. But in the book, uh, Ralph Angel was older than Charlie. Um, he was in his 40s and she was in her 30s. So I'm just unclear. I'm unclear. I don't know what's happening. Um, but whatever. Um, and then she offers to pay for Blue to learn how to swim because she wants him to learn how to swim. And Ralph Angel, well, she says that you know they have they're doing lessons, swimming lessons, yada yada. And he asks how much is it gonna cost, and she says, well, I'll just pay for it with my check. And then um, he says, you know, I don't want you doing that. And then he stops himself and says, but, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm saying, like, but if you was a swimming champion, why you can't teach your son how to swim? You can't save money? They must not, the re recession must not hit them. I don't understand. I'm always looking for a way to save some money. It just, it didn't, it didn't compute. But anyway, um, Charlie mentions to Remy that uh, they're buying, a, uh, they're renting a rich home, a, a fancy home, because she wants Micah to have a sense of normalcy, and I'm like, like, I feel like a sense of normalcy is you going back to, as they would say down here in the South, your roots, your roots are down here, um, all in the Louisiana region, so I don't understand why you feel like you have to buy this big and fancy house for a sense of normalcy. I do understand if you, you know, want to rent or buy a big fancy house because you want a big fancy house and you have the means to do that. Now, that's one thing. But just so your son can have a sense of normalcy, I didn't care for it. Um, Remy also didn't care for it, but I don't care for Remy, so. <laughs> um, and he basically wants her to be more down. And is They have a black success versus white success, um, you know, commentary. And I'm just like, I'm a do-what-I-want-to type of hoe, so I don't understand why we are measuring, you know, successes and where people live and this, that, and the other. Because, like, I could have a million dollars and, you know, I may still live in the hood just because I want to. Like, if I were rich, I would probably keep the same job I have because I like this job. I just don't care for the people a lot of the time, but I like the job. And I would probably give me an apartment, like, right next door to the job, because there are a couple different apartment buildings in that same little vicinity. I would have the apartment and the job and still have my money and, you know, go on vacation when I want to, do what I want to, and then come back and work the job <laughs> and get a little piece of a check. So I don't understand this whole, you know, white people, black people, why do I have to measure my wealth by what white people do? And why can't you just be content being black and being, you know, regular? And, and it's just, I, it's like, do what you want with your money. Remy really acting like this coming out of his paycheck. But whatever. Um, the egg man arrives late <laughs> and Vi is pissed about it. Um, and they, you know, she wants to discuss discounts and this, that, and the other. And this is just a moment to show how crazy things are over at the high yellow. Ramona comes up to her and says, you know, the bathroom is, you know, the women's bathroom is nasty. Now, Ramona, if it were me, I would have kept that to myself. Because I already knew Vi was going to tell you. So clean it. Clean it. <laughs> like what are you doing so i had to keep that little piece of information to myself if i didn't want to clean it that's just that's just me but um and then 
uh, one of I's good, good girlfriends comes in and she's like, oh, I heard Tanya had a baby boy, yada, yada. And the girlfriend's like, yes, girl, his name is Isaiah after my favorite verse. You know, they'll, they that wait on the Lord, renew their strength, run and I get weary, yada, yada. And then she says, you know, they're having a christening and can buy make some of them pies, them good pies. Make a couple of them for the, for the, um, the christening reception. And I'm saying like, I mean... <laughs> Because Vi was like, girl, you know I only do that for Juneteenth. I can't be just out here making pies. And I'm like, it's a christening. It's not, like, make, you probably can make four pies. And that would probably be above and beyond what you needed to make. It's a christening. It's not, <laughs> it's not, like, a big to-do. It's a little christening in New Orleans, Louisiana, or St. Joseph, Louisiana. Like, it's not going to be just a whole, whole, it's not going to be too much. Just make these pies, but she ain't want to make the pies. And this just gave Hollywood an opportunity to say, well, I'll make the pies. I ain't got nothing to do. I've been sitting around here bored all day. <laughs> and then he um Violet says all right you can make the pies and I'm like why does she have to give this grown man permission I mean I understand that it's her recipe but he still could have slipped and made the pies if she said no so I don't know <laughs> anyway um Ralph Angel wants to replace the 30 acres of destroyed cane with soybeans and Charlie begins to say you know how she doesn't she doesn't know about it she doesn't think so and while they're discussing that <laughs> just it was too much for me I was so I was deeply saddened um, for both of the boys, but I'm gonna get to it. So they're discussing this. Blue pops up on Micah and gives, you know, the regular little kid, rah! Micah actually gets shook, sw swings his arm, knocks Blue down. Blue is on the floor crying. Ralph Angel done hemmed up, um, Micah got him up against the wall. Don't you ever put your hand on my son. Charlie's down on the floor with Blue holding him, you know, consoling him, but telling Ralph Angel to get your hands off, get off my son, get off him. <laughs> I'm just like, ooh, <laughs> it's just too much going on. It was a lot. It was a lot. And, you know, they, you know, she, Ralph Angel lets Micah go, picks up Blue, and he's like, all right, we're going to go to bed. And Blue asks, can he, you know, sleep with him? And Ralph Angel's like, yes, let's just get out of here. Later on this evening, um, Ralph Angel is, is standing outside having a, a beer. And Charlie apologizes um, on behalf of her son. And Ralph Angel ain't really listening. Um, and he mentioned, she mentions that, you know, I thought you of all people would understand that Mike is having a hard time since, you know, he got arrested. And Ralph Angel goes into me of all people. What does that mean? I was in, in prison for four years. Your son was held for four hours. It ain't the same thing. And I'm like, but how many consecutive four hour segments <laughs> did you, were you in jail those four years? Like the four hours, you were in jail four hours plus. Yes, but you were still in there for the initial four hours. You got arrested and you was probably shook within those four hours. So I don't understand why you can't identify because you've actually done those same four hours you just did more as well so i didn't get it i felt like he could have been like you right i you know i've done some things and you know my bad but he didn't give that to charlie ralph angel says instead that microsoft you made him that way and you know he he needs to understand that it ain't all you know cupcakes and roses it all it ain't all puppy dogs and ice cream it's it's you know hard out here for a pimp when you're trying to make that money for the rent and i'm like Yes, for all intents and purposes, uh, Micah is soft. He is. Um, but people could say the same thing about your son running around with a Barbie doll. Now, I'm not here to judge because I live for Blue and Kenya. You know, Kenya's my good, good, Kenya's me. I already told y'all I'm Kenya. So, and I don't, I don't feel like kids, little boys shouldn't play with Barbie dolls. Personally, I don't. Um, but people, a lot of people out there would say that's soft behavior. So you calling this boy soft. Because he went to jail for a little bit, but then when somebody mentions that your son, you know, should be playing with a Transformer instead of a Barbie doll, you ready to fight. And I don't get it. I don't get it, but that's just me. Anyway, um, and then he says, you know, money don't make you safe around here, Charlie. It just makes you forget who you are. I'm like, money don't make you safe nowhere. There's not a place that money makes you safe. <laughs> like, nowhere. Um, so, Remy and, and Mr. Prosper Denton and... Uh, Ralph Angel and Charlie are all out and they're discussing the the um, the cane they're looking at it and says look like you know the flies are gone and I said thank god we got rid of Bill Cosby and um then they say they have to clean those those leaves or else fungus will set in and Charlie's shook because she's like okay I thought that when I paid this man to get on this plane and ride around and spray these pesticides that that was going to fix the problem what are you talking about and they're like no we got to scrub them and she's like okay well how do we do that Denton said, elbow grease. <laughs> she said, elbow grease. Physical? Physically? Just what? I'm confused. And um, 
Ralph Angel took this uh, moment to to dig into her and said, well, don't worry about it. The field Negroes will handle it. And I said, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, this is when we start to get into a little piece of, of, of a shuck, a little piece of shuck and a little piece of jive. It gets real a little bit later, but these are the begin beginnings of, of the fetching step that her husband was doing prior to. So anyway, Vi comes home and sees her, her beau in the kitchen making up these pies, and she immediately takes over. And I'm like, that was this man's new hobby. <laughs> like, you telling him to relax, telling him to find something to do, and then he do it, and then you come in, and you put your apron on, and then it's yours now. And you having him crack the eggs for the custard. And I'm just like, I guess. If he like it, I love it. And then she's, uh, he says that Ralph Angel called and, you know, was telling him about the, the, the fields and the acres and the, the flies and, and things. Violet sends him on. Go on, you know, go on over there. I'll make these pies. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, I hope they cut him a little check or give him a little something to do. Um, so Nova goes over to this this function. She's, like, trying to get an interview or something. I couldn't really pay too much attention because, again, y'all, I was at work. Um, and this part kind of just got lost in translation. But she's talking to some corporation, some company, some woman about something. And the woman be begins to read her and telling her, you know, we know how you do. And this is why the people at the office don't want to talk to you on the record because you a mess. And I'm just like, dang <laughs> Like, let her leave, free her. How you treat her? Like, the discrimination. I'm like, your own sister. Your own African-American sister. Treat you like this. The nerve. Anyway, uh, Ralph Angel calls Darla and asks her to leave work. To come and hand wash these leaves. And Darla says she'll figure out a way. And I said, no, Darla. No, you won't. Because y'all need to have boundaries. And he needs to know that you are not available at every moment of every day. Uh, just because he wants to see you does not mean he can. But, you know, Darla, she doesn't have that. <laughs> she don't have that in her spirit. She says she's going to find a way to make it work. So her boss pops in. She asks him, you know, can I leave? I got an emergency. Now, me, we all know I would have lied. Because <laughs> he said, you know, is it your son? She said, no, no, my son's fine. It's my boyfriend. He said, well, leave your love life where it is. Worry about that off the, you know, when you off the clock. You on the clock today. You're going to finish this shift. And I said, I would have said, my son got whooping call <laughs> something. I'd have made up something that would make me have to go. But she couldn't get with that. Um, if I were dedicated to leaving. Initially, I would have just told Ralph Angel, no, I'm at work. I'll come by when I get off. Click. But if I had decided I was going to find a way to go, then I would have found a way to go. But anyway, um, it's just very selfish that Ralph Angel asked her, but I, I just, I digress. Um, and so... Darla pops up anyway. <laughs> she, we at the at the fields, and you know Denton is telling the girls this is you know vinegar and and Dawn dish soap and a little bit of water, and we're gonna use this to clean the leaves. And I say I use that to clean my tub. Good to know if I ever have you know a white fly infestation on my sugar cane leaves that I can use my same bathtub formula to clean my leaves. It's wonderful. And uh, Darla pops in, and you know Charlie. Okay, I'm bouncing all over the place. I'm sorry, y'all. We swoop over to Charlie, because I feel like if I say we swoop over, y'all will know we swooping. We swoop over to Charlie and Nova. And Charlie mentions to Nova that Ralph Angel, you know, hemmed up her boy. She's like, what? No, y'all need to get out of there. Come on, live with me. And I'm like, she can tell the whole tea that Micah swung his arm behind him and knocked the baby out. And Ralph Angel just had an initial father reaction. She didn't say all that. She just said he knocked her over. And, um... All of that. The farm, there were some farmers before that. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, placed a bet on whether Charlie would be out there, you know, ruining her manicure. And I said, that's just not like it in the book, because in the book she was out there every day. But, you know, for TV, we'll let it happen. <laughs> and she was kind of offended by the bed, and her sister was cackling, and she goes into the kitchen and asks her, you know, do you think I'm a booze, bougie bee? And that's when we start to talk about how Ralph Angel hemmed up her boy. And then, um, you know, Nova says, you can stay with me. And Charlie says, no, this house is just as much ours as it is his, and I'm not going to let him run me off. And then Nova says, well, I know you're not bougie now, because that's a nigga that's a hood mentality right there. And um, I cackled. Vi offers Ralph Angel some pie, and he doesn't want any pie. And I'm like, why are you being short with Aunt Vi? What did she do? <laughs> like, I mean, I understand that Charlie's standing right there, but you're being short with your auntie, and your auntie didn't do it. I don't understand. My mama taught me to be mad at who I'm mad at, so I, I just don't understand. But anyway, um, she peeps that there's some, some shade and, you know, asks, ooh, ooh, a wasp. I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it today. Um, she asks Ralph Angel, um, what 
is what's wrong? What you know, what is all of this? And he goes into, you know, I'm letting her stay on, on my land, work my farm, yada yada yada, my 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 <laughs> and um Violet is like, girl to Ralph Angel, obviously, girl, this is this y'all's land, this ain't your land. And I'm like, if Ralph Angel don't tell somebody, because this is it's eating me worse than it's eating him. But he spills the tea to uh, Violet that this is actually my land. Um, my daddy left it to me. Shows her the letter. And then um, she looks over and says, you don't want this, Ralph Angel. This ain't what you want, son. And I'm looking at Ralph Angel like, she right, boy. She right about it. You don't want this because once Charlie takes her hands off of it, you got to do all of this by yourself with no money. With all, only your little piece of a grant you just got. That's all you got. So you don't want this. So it, it behooves you to keep that to yourself. But, um, you know, we don't know what, what he's going to do. And if I even said, you know, you grown, you're going to do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, I'm advising you, uh, don't do this. And I agree with her because they need each other. You need her for the money to, <laughs> to grow the stuff. She needs you because she ain't got nothing better to do right now. She's just the shiny O'Neal sitting in the background eating chips. Like, <laughs> that's all she would be doing if she had a spawn is on somebody's reality TV show eating chips. That's it. And um, we swoop over to Michael and Charlie, and she says, how would you feel, because Remington got to it now, how would you feel if we didn't live in, you know, the big fancy place, but we live somewhere closer to, to the mill and to the city, yada, yada. Michael's like, I don't care. <laughs> and I'm like, he don't care. He can live rich with his daddy. It don't, like, <laughs> he don't care. He can have his PlayStation and his Xbox at his daddy's house, and then come over to your house and, you know, play some basketball with, with the local children. It don't have to be all that. Um, and while they're having this discussion, there's a knock on the door. Michael says, I'll get it. He goes to the door and then he calls for his mom. I'm like, this boy is soft. <laughs> Cause who could it be? I'm thinking it may be the clan or somebody. He didn't call for his mom. May as well have been the clan though. Anyway. And okay. 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 It just dawned on me that this boy probably has some uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, from his police ordeal, whatever may have happened. So maybe he was shook when he saw the police. So I'm gonna give him some, cut him some slack. Um, I'm sorry, I'm distracted because I was literally just talking about how niggas go fishing and there's some niggas crossing my street right now with gigantic fishing poles and a big old vat of fish because it's a lake right over there. But um, anyway, <laughs> so they open the door, Charlie opens the door and they're like, we looking for Ralph Angel Boy alone, is that you? And and uh, Michael steps back because that ain't him, <laughs> it ain't me. Um, and Ralph Angel steps forward and says, I'm Ralph Angel, what's this about? And the police said, there's been, you know, you, you violated your parole. And he said, did and I said, mm-hmm, did. I told y'all last week that gun was gonna come back on us. And that's exactly what they said is that we, you know, heard uh somebody called and said that the girls were out here shooting on this land. And this moment here was just delightful. I my heart was so warm <laughs> when Charlie said, That's my my daddy left me that gun. Um I shot <laughs> and they like, you know, they searched the premises, they found the gun and they asked her, So you shot the gun? And she said, yeah, sure did. <laughs> and they're like, it's still a parole violation. Um, and she's like, I didn't understand. I didn't know. You know, she's like, I didn't know it was a violation. And Ralph Angel lies like I would have lied and like Dollar should have lied. And says, you know, um, I didn't even know the gun was over there. <laughs> I said, yes, nigga, nigga lies. I love a good nigga lie. Um, and he said, he ain't know it was over there. And Charlie says, you know, I didn't know it was going to be a problem. I'm so sorry. And the man says, well, that, you know, still is a violation, Mrs. West. This is when... The shuck, the jive, the fetch, the step, <laughs> just the whole nigga. She may as well have put on some dark brown foundation with a bright red lip and had a watermelon in her hand. Like, <laughs> she may as well have, because she shucked and she jived way more than Davis, <laughs> or about equal. But but I must say way more because she gave him all that hell the other week, and I don't like Davis. So it, it kind of pains me a little bit to have to defend him. Um, but she shocked <laughs> boots. She, he said, Mrs. West, and you know, it, it hit her immediately. He knows who I am. She turned it on. Well, you know, and started kikiing and batting eyes and got this boy out of this parole violation. She started kikiing and batting eyes. She pulled a Kayla. Listen, I have different versions of myself with different people. The one you're getting right now is just the truest form of me. This is who I am with my mama. This is who I am at the house. When I get with my grandparents, I'm a little old lady like that, <laughs> you know, like when I'm with my great, great, my great grandma, um, she is 91, 90 or 91. I think she's 90. She'll be 91 this year. We sit around, we watch Judge Judy and we, you know, gripe and we just old girls. 
when I get around, you know, a little cousin, we'll be talking about Migos and whipping and nae and, you know, all the things those girls do. So I understand how to code switch. She switched and she turned into Mrs. West and she gave that man a show. And I said, you better shuck and you better jive and you better not say nothing else to Davis about it because you just did it too. <sighs> My notes literally says, um, Charlie says she didn't know it was a problem. Ralph Angel says he didn't know it was here. Officer recognizes her. Switch up. Me, because that's me. Look who's shucking now. Look who's shucking now, which should have been the title of the episode. Um, and then she says after the police left, you know, she gave, uh, you know, no matter what, I will always have your back. And that puts Ralph Angel in a better place, you know, in a better mindset. And he goes and talks to Micah and says, look, you know, when you were born, I thought of you like a little brother because you and me are the same distance in age as, you know, me and Nova. So I just kind of always felt like you were my little brother, but I didn't get to see you that much. So I don't know how you grow growed up. But I haven't been through it, um, and I know you suffer right now, and if you ever need to talk, if you ever need a moment, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about that, I'm here. And I thought that was just so nice. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so pleased. Um, and then he, Micah says, you know, I'm sorry I hit blue. Ralph Angel says, tell him. <laughs> and then he, Ralph Angel apologizes um, for hitting, for hemming him up. And Ralph Angel says something that really made me think. He said, inside, you know, we, it's normal for people to act like animals, but outside, we are human. I was like this boy is prolific this snaps he said that like and it makes sense because in the book ralph angel was just a couple credits from being an engineer so i mean he was smart in the book it makes sense for him to be smart here on on the television so i live for it i'm sorry y'all it's very hot and i'm very parched um hollywood is bored and Vi tells him, you know, can just, just chill out. What your dreams is? What you want to do? And he says, you know, my dream is this. Waking up with you, going to sleep with you, and this, that, and the other. Sidebar, I've mentioned before how white women sit on the edge of their bed and they give you, you know, creams and lotion. Violet was sitting in the middle of that bed. I had to separate her name. Violet was sitting in the middle of that bed, put lotion on her feet. And I said, like a black mama. She had her hair tied. I said, that's how you put on lotion. Them white women always sitting at the end of the bed giving you this and this. That's not us. That's not how we do. She had that lotion. She had her feet. <laughs> she was lotion. I said, look at this. Look at this nigger tree at work. Hey, Amen. I live for it. Um, and then, you know, he asked her what her dream is. And she says, well, I guess my dream is I want to open up a, a, a business and sell my pies. I said, well, we're going to have Vi's Pies coming out, you know, to a, to a Walmart near you. Patty Pie and Vi Pie. Um, okay, so Micah pops in on Blue. We're swooping over. We're swooping over. Swoop with me. Micah pops in on Blue and uh, said, you know, Blue immediately is like, I, I didn't touch anything. I'm like, boy, you better touch all of Touch everything. Pee on it if you want to. It's yours. It's in your room. You have a right. Um, but Micah's like, no, no, it's all right. I'm sorry I hit you. I'm not going to hurt you no more. I ain't mean you no problem. And I bought you this. And he uh, pulls out a little art set and says, you know, this is so you and Kenya can make all the masterpieces y'all want to make. And they hug and it's just very cute. I'm like, this is precious. This is this is the content I want to see on my TV. Um, and then we find out that Charla, Charla, <laughs> Charlie and Micah uh, have moved into the mill, I think they said. And it's just a real down-to-earth little spot. It's, it's cool. It's calm. It's collected. And uh, they're joking about, um, you know, this ain't. This ain't the Ritz Carlton. This ain't going to be as fancy as you think it is. And, you know, how long do y'all think y'all are going to stay here? Yada, yada. And they, they cackle about that. And Michael's unpacking something and he finds something, um, an Egyptian, looks like a Nefertiti, like little statue, a little, um, a little whatnot, a little thing. And, um, Michael's like, what's this? Now watch me. I don't know if y'all caught this. I can't wait to watch the other YouTubers reviews to see if they caught it. Speaking of, I believe, um, I think, I think it's pronounced. I'm really not that great <laughs> at pronunciations. Excuse me. I think her name is Jamika Nicole. I believe she does, um, Queen Sugar. Um, Mike V does Queen Sugar. Um, from time to time, you know, Much Love will do it. Random TV Reviews does it. James Caldwell does it. Obviously, Lady Nika does it. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Um, there are just a lot of other YouTubers out there to do it. Um, and if you're watching me, you should be watching them as well. Um, and if you're watching them, could you come over here and watch me, please? Because I need views. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna try to remember to link them down below. Um, and yeah, if you do reviews or whatever, shout yourself out in the comments. I don't mind that at all, and I would love to subscribe to y'all if you do them. Um, you know, just holla. Anyway, back to that. So they mentioned because <laughs> I really I'm excited. I'm gonna go in the house and watch other YouTubers like in a minute. But they mentioned. Um, okay, so Micah says, "What's this?" Charlie says, "Oh, this is something your grandmother got on a trip to Egypt." When Charlie mentioned her mama, Nova dipped. 
I don't know if anybody caught it. I can't wait to find out if they, if, if they did. But Charlie said, your grandmother, Nova, did a, a, a smooth operation. She slid from the premises. And she was looking like, mm -mm, I, I'm not going to be a part of this. And Deb, I was like, so what's tea with Lorna? Like, I mean, I understand that Nova, I mean, Charlie is probably that outside child. But I need to know. I need to get into it. And I hope I don't have to wait till season three. But I need details. Um, and the last thing that happened uh, was... Darla tiptoed herself into work and received her final paycheck. And her boss said, I told you not to go nowhere and you still left. So you're fired effective immediately. And Darla's giving, this is a part of my recovery. And I just, I can't believe. And, da -da -da. and he's like, well, another part of your recovery is uh, taking responsibility for your actions. You did this thing. I told you not to do this. Your consequence. I'm like, sounds reasonable, reasonable to me. I can't even be upset. Like he told her she couldn't go and she left anyway. I can't. <laughs> I can't dispute. I can't be shook for her because facts. <laughs> so anyway, I can't wait till uh, three days from now when it comes on again because I'm so late. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to watch a couple of YouTubers. I'm going to upload this. I'm going to watch Claws. I believe the Potomac uh, reunion is this evening. So it's going to be a good little evening. I'm off tomorrow. So it's, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good time. Like, comment, and subscribe. All the things the YouTubers say and... um all my information, you already know, is down there. I'm going to try to remember to link the other YouTubers down there. If if I called your name or if you are a YouTuber or whatever and I ain't put you down there, let me know. Hit me up on one of my uh, many avenues that you can find in my description box always. And remind me that I ain't put your link down there. And uh, that's it. I'll catch y'all maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight. I may come through and do one of the, the garage videos for one of the shows since I was so behind on this one. I don't know yet. Um, but I will definitely see you tomorrow. I'm, I'm not making no excuses for tomorrow unless I'm, I'm dead and gone or unless I'm just depressed like I've been all week. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow, y'all. Peace.